Hi everyone, this is going to be part two of our series, How to Make Your Research Zing with $1 Scan, especially with Airtable part two. And this will be about ordering one book at a time. So instead of having to put a whole order together and instead of creating a whole box to ship all your books, let's try doing it one book at a time. That's what I'm doing now after I did a conversion of all my books. Now, as I buy every book, I have it shipped not here in my house, but to $1 Scan. They uh, uh, basically turn that book into an ebook. And just for a few dollars, and I have the original pagination for purposes of references when I cite books. And that's a lot better than technically electronic books that have no pagination or location reference that people can find. So anyway, I just want to show you how to do this. And uh, I want to now first remind us, where what is the objective? How are we going to use it in the end run? Okay, here is the objective of one uh, using uh, uh, having digital pdfs of every document you are relying upon in terms of uh the books they have to be in pdf and they can be indexed so in uh, Airtable, i created something called ebook conversions keeping track of all the books i was coming in and doing but once they were done they went into this database which is basically going to index everything so i have the name author city and so on then i have the broad issue that it relates to and then i have the entire book here and i can download each of these books so if I want to look at the Book of Acts, I want to look at the Mr. Malk's book, I can just quickly click this button and up it comes. It takes a little bit of time because it's like a 300 page book, but it's not that bad. Wait, wait, wait for it. <laughs> so maybe seven seconds, but that's perfect. And then it tells me the name of the book, Paul on Trial, the Book of Acts, is a defense of Christianity, John Mock, OCRD. That means I've OCR'd it. I have all the uh, words indexed inside the PDF itself. And then I can do word searches on the document. So that tells me I've done everything I want to prepare it. So here we go. I'm going to pause it for a minute. All right. So you can see the book here that uh, downloaded in from Airtable. I can change the page now. I can look at it that way. I can go to page 40. I can then uh, increase the size so I can read it better. I can add comments. I've already added one. Theophilus is a magistrate, so they're stored inside of Chrome. You can download here on the right side, put it back into your computer. So you can be anywhere. You could be, the Airtable can be opened in anybody else's computer. You can download material while you're visiting your, your aunt and your uncle and you want to just see your books and read them. You're all, they're all accessible. Wherever you go, you could be on an airplane. You want to download your books, you can read them. You, can, you don't have to have them all on iBooks. You can read them and study them. So they're all referenced. And even any article you've saved, any PDF of anything, a PDF of a web page, they're all indexed inside of here. So I put articles I find online. I print them to websites to PDF. And I do the same thing with articles and uh, some of my own articles that I've written. So I can go back and I can pull up things by an index method and find everything. So everything is indexed over here. I have bo the books on the Book of Acts. Peter Head has written books on P Acts, for example. We've gone through those. Anti-Nicene anti anti works. You, one of them is from 1885, Philip Schaff. You see how this works? All right, so let's go back to our PowerPoint. And we're going to take a look here at, uh, I want you to recommend you st start at $1 scan. You use the number $1 scan.com. It's pretty easy to remember. And it'll bring you back to this and hopefully you've created an account you can log in automatically with chrome it'll save your username and password hopefully you're using that to your advantage to save time just make a note of what that is and then go forward and you'll see this is the first landing page it's telling you where to send your books to this address now i'm going to explain what you should do with this address this is, by the way, where it is located physically. So if you live in the area, you can actually drive to Campbell, California, and you can drop it off if it's close enough to you. Now, this is what you have inside of Amazon. I'm going to assume everybody has an Amazon account because everybody has an Amazon account. Some exceptions, but not many. So I basically put my name there, and I also put Mr. Akiko, that's the owner, operator, and I say, you know, my name, and then I put and, and slash Mr. Akiko or and Mr. Akiko care of $1 scan. This will be its address here. I put it all on one line. I, I think it defaulted that way. So I never put the apartment unit there. Here's their phone number in case somebody has to call in in the address and so on. And uh, you'll see that you're also allowed to identify if it's open five days a week and it's closed at a certain hour. So I'm just going to show you what I did. 
I basically just simply said it's open at 10 and I closed at 5. Okay. I don't know. Um, uh, and then I have Saturday and Sunday. It's closed. I don't know. But I don't want my book sitting on somebody's doorstep and could be picked up and ripped off by somebody. So just why not pick the, the days of the week that are okay? And Amazon can schedule anything it wants, whenever it wants. So it works out for everyone's benefit. Then uh, that's it. So I'm hoping you would try that out. Send one book and you'll find out how it operates. And maybe you don't even have the estimate to charge. Uh, but you can set up the invoice for him inside of $1 scan. It lets you price it out. And then you can print that out and put that um, in an email or or uh, describe it. But I, basically, he knows what to do with one book. He'll, he just counts the pages and he basically then charges you for it and sends you an email you respond to the email and then he will do the work. He's not going to do work without payment first, just so you know. So look out for your email, look for a $1 scan in your email and he will advise you what you need to pay. He sends you a PayPal request. You accept it. You pay with your own credit card and that's it. And I'm going to ask you again as, as a favor to me is if you are interested in using Freetable, use the sign up that I'm going to put inside of the uh, description and it will allow me to make a $5 credit on my bill. If you do that, that's it's, it's all. I get nothing paid by Mr. Uh, by Mr. Kiko or one dollar scan, but uh, this is just simply uh, why not why not uh, use a, a link I'm going to give you because then it benefits and lowers my cost. But regardless, anyway, it's free. It doesn't co- the program doesn't cost you anything until you start to decide you want to use it for other things for a lot of data that is in excess of their minimums. So they have a few hundred megabyte are free. On, on these platforms. But if you decide to use it heavy, heavy duty, you might have to pay a hundred some odd dollars a year to Airtable. Okay, God bless. Take care. Ciao, bye.